Hi, my name is Pierre van der Hagen. I work at Université Libre de Bruxelles in Belgium, and our laboratory is mostly interested in the development of the cerebral cortex. The cortex is arguably the most complex structure in our brain. It comprises many types of neurons that populate, for instance, specific areas or layers, each of them um, displaying specific patterns of input and output. Another intriguing feature about the cortex is that it has undergone considerable divergence during recent evolution, and it has indeed become more and more complex as we go from non-primates to primates, and within primates as we go to hominids and humans. So the basic question is, what are the developmental mechanisms behind the generation of cortical complexity, and how could they be linked to evolution? And what we've been doing, and what we'll present uh, in this article, is basically how to design a simplistic reductionist model of the generation of the complexity of the human cerebral cortex. Hi, I'm Nina Spuni Camacho, and I'm a postdoc working in Pierre van der Hagen's lab. So I'm involved in the generation of an in vitro model to study human corticogenesis from human pluripotent stem cells. So basically using human embryonic stem cells, but also human induced pluripotent stem cells. So following the culture of human pluripotent stem cells at a very low density and in a medium devoid of all morphogens, but in the presence of nogging, an inhibitor of BMP signaling that has been shown to be required for proper neuroectoderm specification, we achieved at about two weeks in culture an efficient differentiation into uh, four brain entelencephalic progenitors as attested by the presence of several markers um, that we detect by immunofluorescence or by qPCR analysis. Later in culture, at around day 40, uh, many of these progenitors have already exited cell cycle and become neurons that presented pyramidal morphology and that expressed dozens of genes for generic expression of pyramidal neurons and a specific layer identity. And this has been tested by immunofluorescence, qPCR and microarray. Neurogenesis extending then for about three months in culture with time-dependent maturation of these neurons in vitro. Arriving at days 60 and 70 days in vitro where most of the neurons present several markers of connectivity. And in collaboration with David Gall and Sir Schiffman from ULB, we could also show that many of these neurons presented electrophysiological properties characteristic of mature cortical neurons. So, one exciting topic was to investigate how the human cortical neurons could integrate into neural networks that are already existing in vivo. So, for that purpose, we generated a constitutively expressing uh, GFP human pluripotent stem cell line that we differentiated for about three weeks in culture. And then, in collaboration with Afasene Gallard, we grabbed the cells into the mouse uh, newborn. In analyzing these neurons after one to two months uh, post transplantation, there is a typical pyramidal morphology and neuronal orientation into the cortex, but yet a simple dendritic pattern. And following 9 to 10 months post transplantation, these neurons considerably complexified, now presenting a complex apical dendrite with numerous dendritic branches. At these later stages, we will also detect the presence of several dendritic spines, suggestive of the establishment of synapses. Interestingly, these neurons fully integrate into the mouse cortex from early post-transplantation stages. However, their maturation seems to follow a very slow and specific pace that closely resembles the timeline of a human cortex development. So the observation of structures that resemble spines on the dendrites of the transplanted neurons was very exciting to us because it suggested that probably synaptogenesis had occurred. In collaboration with Michele Giubliano and Daniele Linero from University of Antwerp, we confirmed this using patch clamp recordings and found functional synaptic integration of the transplanted human neurons within the host brain networks. This model of corticogenesis from human pluripotent stem cells opens several interesting opportunities. On the one hand, it provides a new experimental tool to study the mechanisms behind the development of the human cortex and thereby its potential links with evolution of the human brain. In addition, using induced pluripotent stem cells from patients presenting specific neurogenetic diseases in combination with cortical differentiation and in vivo xenotransplantation offers unique ways to model some complex diseases such as epilepsy or autistic-like disorders in an in vivo experimental 
setting with human neurons. Bearing in mind that, as the Belgian painter René Magritte reminds us, models in art or science, no matter how beautiful or useful, remain models. <laughs>